SBAR D2. This is our second one. We installed one in van one uh, just last week. When I opened this box, I was incredibly overwhelmed with all of the cables and clips and things you had to put together that they didn't do for you. So I thought I would take this opportunity to make a video and detail everything about the S-Bar installation and unboxing and how to put all the cables together. It's very overwhelming, so if you'll bear with me till the end, um, uh, we'll get through it together. The full installation, how to crimp and put these wires together in here, what you need, what you don't need. Uh, Let's get to it. It's a real unboxing. I didn't previously open it and then put it back together like I know some of you do. When I was going through this on band one, I looked for all sorts of inspirational help on YouTube and found one video that helped me with the wires. So I will try and be more detailed about it. We are installing in a Mercedes Sprinter van 2021. This is not necessary. I may redo this video for the Ford. Uh, we have no intentions on building the Ram, so sorry guys. These directions and warnings and all that, garbage. Okay, uh, two sheets of paper. These you want to hold on to, okay? These are worthwhile looking at. This is going to be your thermostat control and the long wiring that they However, give. they give you the clip that goes into the main terminal, which is just in there. They do not hook the wiring up for you, so we will walk together on how to do that and make sure you do it right so your unit works. There is the, uh, the unit itself. Anyway, this is the end cap for the outgoing tube that they give you. They don't put it on the unit. I don't know why. Just as in our first box, a lot of the, the unboxing videos that we saw, they give you a extra piece of exhaust to go from the muffler out to the side of the vehicle because you want to exhaust it out to the side and not under your vehicle where you can pool gases. So we actually take uh, and cut just about, I don't know, a foot off of here. Uh, we'll show you, if we do it on our bandsaw, you can easily use a hacksaw if you have one. All your nuts, bolts, twist ties. Are you getting this? This is your uh, intake vent cover and your exterior vent uh, for the black pipe. Here's all the stuff for your fuel lines. Uh, these are the caps and twist tie downs for the exhaust and the air intake. Here is your fuel line. They give you way more than enough. And this is the main harness as it comes. Um, we will go through this because there is a lot of unnecessary crap in this thing. Then you have the thing you paid 11, 12, 1300 bucks for, whatever it was. I think it's like 1200 bucks. Amazon. So you have the star of the show right here. There's your S-bar heater. Switch it right there. And none of it works without this little doohickey. This is your fuel pump. All your instructions and everything that they give you, garbage. Honestly, those instructions won't tell you anything to help you. Okay, so on this unit, this is your heating element. This is what gets hot from the diesel fire. This is a diesel furnace, not a gas one. Your cover will go over this. Your black, large black pipe will connect to this. This side, where you can see the little fan on the inside here, this is your intake. Don't mistake those two. I did on van one. <laughs> this is your gasket. This will be really helpful when you want to mark the area that you're going to drill inside the van under the seat. We'll show you how to do that. And you really don't need to measure underneath the van. I'll explain all of that to you where the, where the main cross members are uh, that come through underneath your seat. I'll show you all that. So here's your blower tube. This one's shorter than the last one. Hey Austin, this one's shorter. We got gypped. All right, uh, your intake. We'll end up cutting a bunch of this off because you won't need that much line. And your exhaust, like I said, we'll end up cutting about a foot off of this just to go from the muffler out to the um, exterior of the van. I got a few common household appliances with the exception of this. Basically, you've got your needle nose pliers, so your trimmers, and then we have a little wire stripper tool. You could easily use the common one. It's, I forget what it's called. I've got one out there. Let's go through all these wires. All right, we won't need these until installation. That'll be a little later. In this ginormous mess. Okay, this one here comes with bare wire at the end and two green wires to a plug. 
this actually plugs directly into your fuel pump and clips in just like that. When you're installing this, as you've seen in other videos, the intake is going to be on this side where the black piece is sticking out. That's the intake. Of course, this is the exit. You have to wire this and it's a little bit difficult, but you don't have to worry about the polarity, which wire goes where. I just cut a little bit of a knife get into there. I try and cut right down the middle of the wire so as not to hurt any of them. Alright. So this connects directly to this. I'll give you all these little pieces. It can seem a little overwhelming I'm sure. Alright, I'm over 50 years old and as many of you know you need glasses when you get old. Alright, so there are two green lines that you need to connect to here. First thing you're gonna do before you splice this wiring or do anything is you're gonna put these little plugs on so that the narrow end is facing out. You'll see why later. Just put them all the way out of the way so it should look like that. Then you can go ahead and splice your wiring. Get it on the right size. There we go. 18 seems to work on this tool and you only need about a quarter of an inch sticking out go ahead and twist them off they do give you extras in case you goof up and need to cut that off and go down the wire i'm only doing this one we won't do the power yet because uh, this one will fit through underneath the two seats from the passenger to the driver's seat to go through the boot to connect to the pump so it is small enough to go through there without a problem actually this portion is what goes through this stays over in your driver's seat area so then you're going to put this in this tiny little clip here and just kind of brace it up there. Once you've done that, take your needle nose pliers and close the first one closest to the end. Just kind of pinch it down a little bit so it grabs a hold of the wire. That's going to keep it from going anywhere. <laughs> right as I say that. Get back in there, you little turd. See, this isn't easy. Get rid of that one. Try that again. You need a magnifying glass to do this. It's crazy. All right, give it a nice good hard pinch. And now these two that you see still here on the very end, you need to wrap those around the cord, otherwise it will not fit into this. So I just do them one at a time, kind of close up and wrap the other one over the top of that one. So it just looks tight. Now you can put some shrink wrap over the top of this and heat it down, but you don't need to. It is going into this. Let's go ahead and do the second one here real quick. Okay, that one's just a little bit too long. I'm going to trim a little bit off of that so we can get that end piece around the green portion of the wiring. Get that in there, just touching all the metal, crimp it down really good. And I'm just using common household you know, tools that you probably have laying around. If you're in a professional shop, you're going to have obviously way better tools than these like we do out in the shop. We're going to keep this elementary. It's cool. Okay, good and tight. So now this, these two pieces, they match. So you're going to stick them in here and you can kind of see that there's two pieces kind of going together like this where the other piece will slip in between. These need to go up and down. So they'll go in this way and they'll click. So now they're stuck in there. Let's go ahead and sit the other one. And it doesn't matter which way as long as they're flat so that you see there's, I don't know if you can see that, but they're identical to the one that goes in the pump. Oh, but not, not enough light on there, but you'll see. Then you take your two little plugs and you slide them in there. Um, I forgot, I used on van one, I use this little tiny screwdriver. See it? Barely little tiny thing. And I just use it to push the plug into the hole on both sides. Try to get it in there as best I can with fingers. Close it all the way in. And you got this little thing on the back, this little wiggly thing. This goes in between your two wires, comes down and clamps in place to hold those plugs in there. Okay, your, your fuel line is done. Some of the stress went away. All right, on this other stuff here, you have your main cable with two really long other wires. You can leave this clamp on here so they don't get out of control. All right, this is the one wire that has the fuse box right here, fuse box. It's connected to a pretty long wire. This is actually going to go underneath the uh, compartment between the driver and passenger seat as well. We will address clipping and cutting and doing all that later because the pieces that go on the end of this are too large to get through that cavity hiding underneath both the seats. So we'll leave that one till later. You have another short one here that has a yellow sticker on it basically that says do not bend. This is a diagnostic support. You don't need that. Then you have 
the other one that will connect to your control unit. So this one is really important and it's kind of difficult to deal with. They put this one that they put on here is not what you're going to use. You're going to take this off and get rid of it. But before we work on this one, you see the fuel connection port right here that goes into this one here. And then this little this little wire that's around it, it comes off like so. I'll just wrap up the fuel thing real quick. And there's only one way that this can go together. See, if I try to push it in this way, it won't go in. But if you turn it the other way, it will go in. And then if you add this little metal clip on here and push it down, it locks it on there so you can't take it apart. But for right now, we don't need this connected. Let's put that back for now. All right, then you have this other very long cable. And it says, do not use for analog control only insulate wire ends. All right, this is gonna be super cringy for all of you. Get rid of it. You can put a piece of, of electrical tape over the end of this, wrap it up, seal it, you're good. All right, let's get on to the business end of this. This one, this one gave me the most pain because you take this off, you don't need it. Um, they do give you, in your box with your controller, they give you another little handy dandy bag of goods here. So you have your extra pieces here from the first one. So we'll just leave those right there. And now you get extra, well, they, yeah, you got a couple extra. A couple extra for this one in case you goof up. Very important piece, do not lose this. And then you'll have four of these you'll be using. Once you've got this piece, you want to um, gently pull it out. You will need it. Put that right there. It's just a piece right there. You can see how these wires connect and how this will connect to it. So the bump on the top goes with the, the mounting portion and it clicks on there nice and tight. Now, the wiring harness they give you for the control panel, another thing, by the way, unless you're wiring two control panels in your van, which could theoretically be possible, one for the front, one for the back by the bed. You do not need this clamp right here. We clipped ours off so that we could feed this through the ceiling a lot easier. You only need this four prong connector. I guess we'll go ahead and open this up and show you. So this is your S-Bar controller and it has two connections at the end. One is a two port, the other is a four port. You only need the four port connector, but you can leave these together. You don't have to cut anything. But for us, when we wanted to feed this through the ribs of the van to keep it as isolated as possible, we cut this off and got rid of it because we don't need it. We're not running two connectors. Uh, I'm sorry, two control panels. So that's a judgment call for you guys. Leave it as is. What we're going to deal with here, and just to keep all this from going crazy, I'm only gonna take out a little piece of it. You've got four wires. You got brown and red. Those are obvious and easy. I'm just twisting these off as I pull them. Keep the wires from going crazy. All right, so then the way you're gonna wire this on here is you're gonna look at your main control wire here, and you're gonna see how this connects to this and what wires are where. So on the top, closest to the connector here, on the top, you're gonna to put the red wire and the blue wire with the black stripe. There are two blue wires, a blue wire with a red stripe and a blue wire with a black stripe. So you're going to put the red wire and the blue wire with the black stripe on the top of this connector, which means they're going to be red on this side, blue on this side. To do that, we find what wires we have. There's the red striped blue wire. Here's the, here's the blue and black one. So here we go. You get your two wires, then you go back and you get this little rubber baby bubby bumper and you feed the wire through if you can. You know what I did last time was I had to clip the wires off and just feed the wire sleeve through and then re-open it up to expose the wires. But let's see if we can get this through here without having to do that. So far so good. All right, then the wire that goes below the red wire is the blue and red striped wire. So we will wiggle that one over here. And obviously the brown is gonna be in the last location. Feed these under, so blue and red striped wire go underneath red. 
Yeah, see, they bunch up on you sometimes. You, it's gonna be difficult to get it through here, especially when you're dealing with very little space. So I'm gonna cut this just a teeny bit more. Now, slicing my fingers open because YouTube doesn't like blood. Neither do I, really. Let's pull that out of there. And then we'll just cut that off a little bit. All right, so we got the blue with red stripe underneath the red wire. And then, of course, the brown goes underneath the blue with black stripe. So if you were looking at all these and get them fed through this thing, there we go. So you have the red on top, the blue with the red stripe underneath it. You have the blue with the black stripe on top next to the red with the brown underneath it. So that looks exactly like this one. Red on top, uh, blue with black stripe, blue with red stripe underneath the red, and brown underneath the blue with the black stripe. So these will go in identical to the way it matches up on this side. So each wire plugs to its, its partner on the other end. So then we're going to connect all of these just like we did. I don't know if you can see those, but they're super tiny and they're such a pain in the butt. But if you can get these on there, you're gonna be in good shape. They give you six of them. So in case you screw up and bend one or break it, you've got a couple more to play with. So let's just go with the red to begin with. Oh, and in here, there is a tiny hole. So if you get these spun up, you know, tight enough, you should be able to fit it right inside that little hole. Perfect, like so. And then you can crimp your first one closest to the end, pinch that nice and tight, and then we'll wrap the other one around it in the back, which goes around your wire sheath, and then fold the other one over the top of it. Take your time, be gentle, all right, so that's the red one. And now we've got the others. So we can just get these put in there. And bring the other side down and clump them together. To keep these as tight as you can, and we got our last one here. Take your time when you're doing this so you have the sheath exposed to this last one and this one's going to grab your wire and then you should have your wire tucked into this little tiny tube and then close it up and then wrap the one around the wire pinch the first one first get it down on the wire and bring the other one up and over the top of it pinch it over the wire and then pinch them both together so we should look like this i don't know if you can see that but that's as best i can show you so now you have your four wires you have your clips on them Double check your placing, make sure everything's right. So my bottom, I guess that would be bottom right is brown. My bottom left is blue with the red stripe. You have blue with the red stripe. Red and then blue with the black stripe. So now you're gonna take it and put it in these coinciding holes inside here. You can see that, but they should clip when you stick them in. So I'm gonna do the first two together. Actually, I just noticed I didn't finish the red one here. They have to be down or they won't go in the hole properly. Here we go. So blue and black and red on the top with the clippy. Okay, those two went in just fine. And I probably should have put them all in at the same time because I have very little to play with here. Make sure you hear that click. There we go. So all four of them are in there and they've all clicked. Then you've got this, I don't know what you'd call it, but you know, just rubber baby buggy bumper and it goes back inside of the fitting. This is where you might want to use your little tiny screwdriver. Be very careful not to poke or clip your wires. Just get it around the edges so it's in there and then just kind of work it in. This water tightens the seal, not like you need it on the inside of a van. Just kind of push it in there so it's all the way equal with the edge of the plastic. Okay, we've got our clip. So now you have your wires that you can see inside here. You just want to make sure that they're in their little channel in there, that they're not bent, they're nice and straight. And then you have this little tiny orange thing. It needs to go in there. And I believe it only goes in one way. This is where I used my needle nose pliers. And this little V-shape will go in between the two sides. It only goes in there one way, and that's not it. So we'll turn this around and it clips. You'll hear it 
clip when you get in there. So that's it. This is done. And then this connects to this and locks in place. And now you've got your connection for your um, thermostat control. So now that we're done with that, we've got all this wiring done. I would advise keeping all of your extras just in case you troubleshoot later down the road and maybe something broke inside. Keep all this stuff together. Maybe you have a, a keep one of your bags and just throw all your extra stuff in there. They give you an abundance of, of self-tapping screws, wire twists, all that stuff. So we ended up with a few extra parts um, at the end of it, but everything was bolted down securely, so we didn't have any problems with you know having a few extra parts. You never want to take something apart and then have extra bolts and stuff when you put it back together. That's not good. Alright, so after that, as long as you know. I don't know why they don't put this piece on here. You can. Um, we waited until we got it into the van. I don't know why, but um, you can just as easily go ahead and put this together. You'll see little knobbies around the outside edge of this on two sides, and there are holes on all four sides, and it is of equal size each way, so it doesn't matter how you put it on, but you can go ahead and, and clip it on. Get in there, you turd. Yeah, it's very tight. There. There's one corner that's always a pain. <laughs> trying to make this look easy, but it's not. There's one corner that wants to get caught up. And then when one corner goes in, the other one pops out. There we go. All right. Brute force always works. So there you go. Just remember, with the fan, play with it with your finger. The fan is your intake. The metal vents that you see in this hole is your outgoing air. All right, on that note, we'll take this out to the garage. Okay, I just wanted to show you a quick video of the uh, wiring under van one for reference in this video. You can see we come off the plug from Mercedes. You don't need the adapter. The new S-Bar package gives you one right here. Just make sure you grab the correct one make sure your crimp is tight enough but not too tight because it will suck air I have learned this from experience and the pump will not pump correctly you can see our line is full of diesel and you've got your connector here this is what about 15 to 20 percent of an angle looks like kind of kilter to say um, once you put this mount in here turn it to about one o'clock so 12 would be straight up one o'clock would be over there That'll give you about 15% degree angle. Maybe a little bit more towards two o'clock, it'd be about 20%, obviously. So somewhere right in there gives you a great connection. Um, and then of course we come out. Always keep in mind that the from gas or diesel side is closest to the supply line. This should never be on this side. Um, or you can look at the big bolt. The big bolt is where you want the diesel coming in just for reference on these lines. And then you go in here. I've put a loom over the line you can see underneath there. Now some videos you see, they give you a blue line, but this is actually clear so you can actually see if the diesel is moving. It took us uh, quite a bit. We had to actually prime this with some extra line that we got. We just uh, took this end off. We stuck some extra line in there and sucked out the diesel to get it primed up. Um, uh, next time I'll do that all the way to the S-Bar unit itself uh, just because it's a pain in the butt trying to you know turn this thing on and off on and off on and off to get the, the diesel to the unit um, so we basically came up here we connected you can see the, the, the pipe right underneath there we just got some protective loom from rocks and gravel you know you take these things off road so you want to protect your fuel lines for sure so we go over here kind of in between this bolt here you could put another bolt there and pop it down but it'll be okay and then you're up and over the heat shield here come out over the heat shield and you'll be fine and then you come into pardon all my red that's the gasket um, color that I ended up with anyway so always keep in mind that your fuel and air are both intakes so they will be next to each other the exhaust line should be facing towards the back of the unit when you do the install. So our exhaust line comes down here, kind of comes up, I've got it bolted right here to keep it nice and tight. Bring it around here, I bolted the muffler up here, and then you've got a little extra. 
Now, RS bar did not come with the extra piece that you see in a lot of the videos. So we just took this over to the bandsaw and chopped the extra space off. Um, if you got a hacksaw at home, that will work as well if you didn't get this extra piece. It's really all you need to do just to separate the um, two. Coming up under here, obviously our fuel line. And this is your air intake. So you want to keep your air intake as far away from the exhaust line as possible. And so we brought ours up and over. This box is the jack box that you access from the passenger um, footstep. So I came up and over that, and this is our air intake over here, just kind of sitting there. It's not going anywhere. It's well bolted up there. So that's, uh, that's our underside. Okay, for the upper portion of the S-bar, we put it pretty far back here. This is the intake where my hand is. We just gave it enough room so we could gently wrap the hose around in a circle and bring it out the back. We drilled this hole with a two and three quarter hole saw. I recommend a two and five eighths because there was a little bit of extra play in there. So we're gonna get a two and five eighths for van two and see how that works. I've got all the electrical wrapped up here, kind of tied in nice and tight. We brought a 12 uh, amp, or excuse me, yeah, 12 volt uh, wiring in for an extra plug for up front. There is one included in the driver's side. What we've done with the wiring is we wired it straight to the battery, which is right underneath the front seat padding here. We've brought the fuse line out the back of the driver's seat. A mat will go over the top of this, which is easily accessible so that you can get to this fuse box. And of course, the ground is inside underneath this big black thing that has two bolts on it, one up front here, one in the back. Just take those out and it'll expose the ground for the front portion of the vehicle. But that's about it, we've got it in. We wired it up through the B pillar here, all the way up. We came over, it is big enough to get through here. So we brought it up here, we bring it over here. We've got tons of extra cable and for testing we wired it up. And of course, I pulled the fuse so the power won't turn on, but there's your little controller. We'll have that up here on the outside or inside the cabinet, whichever. That's about it. Okay, we're out here in the garage. Um, you've seen how to hook up all the wiring as I showed you previously. Um, here is everything laying out. You're gonna need a plethora of tools. Also keep in mind you buy these kits at Home Depot um, for all your star, uh, star nuts or whatever you want to call those, um, but they only go up to a T40. To get this out you, and the floors, they're a T45. So you're gonna to need to go on the Amazon and find those. I'll try and put the link below if I remember. You're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket to take this bolt out. The one on the top is a standard Phillips screwdriver and everything else in between is just pop in clips to take this out to run your, uh, your cabling that we put together uh, previously. You're gonna to need to run this up and over if you wanna have your thermostat anywhere back here. You can also run it under the floor. This is a deeper groove right here. So if you do this before you put your flooring in, you can do that. You can run it down here and then run it across. Just make sure you protect it uh, once you put your flooring in. I believe that's what we're gonna do on this van. Um, but I did wanna show you what you needed to take this off and that off. And we took the top off because we're going to put a shelf up here. Anyway, let me show you the inside of where you want to put this. I've gone ahead and did some little 3M stickies. Um, and I've twist tied uh, this out of the way. I don't quite know where that goes to, but uh, that's okay. And then this one, of course, is your seat belt plug that will come out uh, when you take your seat out. This is the... Um, to the sensor that shows you don't have your seat belt on. These are 10 millimeter bolts. I'm not showing you how to take out a seat. You should probably be able to handle that on your own. Um, there is a somewhat plastic black cover that goes over this that's underneath the seat. Uh, what we're gonna do is cut a nice little hole in the middle so you won't see it whether the seat is forward or back. This will allow for additional airflow into the s-bar heater as well as you have a little bit of, of openings in here and here but it's just not enough for how much that thing blows and we're going to cover this hole here with an additional uh, usb port just like the driver side has so i've seen a lot of people take this s-bar 
and basically put it down here and pull off the black uh, rubber gasket to see where they want to put it. That's really not necessary. If you just take it off one-handed. Um, you can tell where these rivet lines are. The frame underneath the van, this is the main frame line that goes underneath the van. You'll see this little pop-out area here. Keep the this is your fuel line, this is your air intake. Keep those forward of the van, keep your exhaust out the back. If you just lay this in here nicely, where it's not up on the ridge, so you get a, a good flat seal, right here is perfect. Anywhere like this would be just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna have my son film what we're doing and we'll take you through everything. But once again, here's all the fuel system stuff. This is the wiring we did earlier. This is, of course, your control panel. This is the wiring we did earlier. This is your uh, main control unit. Uh, this also has the power in it right here. So we will deal with that later. This is the diagram I told you to hang on to. It's, it's a good diagram, kind of shows you how everything is laid out and goes, but we'll do an in-depth uh, installation for you. Drilling down uh, for the S-bar, you can either use a step bit. We'll be using a hole saw, one and an eighth inch hole saw. As you can see, it leaves you, come on baby, leaves you just a little tiny bit of play when you put it over the hole. We're using a titanium quarter inch bit for all of the bolt holes and the fuel line. And we will be using a two and three quarter inch a hole saw for the back here to go through. As you can see, you got just a little bit of play, but when you put it all the way in, this this solid piece, bare, it won't go in all the way, so it's just a tiny bit bigger than that hole needs to be. And of course, you've got all your other items here. We've gone ahead and cut uh, about a, a foot off of the exhaust pipe. That'll come out of our muffler here. These are all of our brackets to mount everything underneath. There's your distribution line, there's your air intake, fuel intake, control panel, some extra screws, and all this good stuff. So let's get started. Oh, by the way, you need a, um, some half inch loom. This would be to protect your fuel line. You might wanna get yourself some of these 3M twist tie locations for when you're wiring everything up, make it look clean. Um, I have some smaller twist ties. However, they do provide you with ample supply of those and you can always clip them off. You're gonna need some lights for working underneath the vehicle and of course, some various wire cutters and tools. Of drilling, we've got our screw gun we'll have under there. That'll pre-drill our hole for one of these larger bolts that will fit right through the pump hole here. We'll mount that at a 15 to 20 degree angle. Uh, think of one o'clock is 10 degrees and 1.30 is 15 degrees. We've got our impact driver to drive that bolt into the frame. This connection is what goes into the van's current connection that we took this cap off of. We'll have a small bit of line that goes to here. This will go into there. We'll have another one that comes out and that's where we'll run all of our line under the van to this piece that'll connect to the S-bar system underneath the van. Let's get at it. Okay, Austin has taken out the front uh, driver's side padding because we need to get to the battery. You basically remove these two bolts on the other side and then you can take out the front padding. This one's huge, it's attached to the whole thing. You don't need to remove this. You just need to remove that side and then take out those four bolts and that will expose the battery compartment which we need to get access to. You will need to get yourself something to chase underneath between the two seats. And also you can see this white portion right here. Um, you'll be able to run it through here from this side right here to get the power into here. Okay, so I've laid out the template down here. I'm just gonna mark it with a red pen where I wanna drill. go put this back on enjoy the music all 
Alright, we got all our holes drilled. We're going to vacuum all this out, get everything cleaned up, get all these metal shards picked up. We'll be right back. Got our holes drilled. You might want to get yourself a little tool like this. It helps uh, remove... Okay, we've gone ahead and cleaned out the holes. We've applied paint uh, so we don't get any future rust. Now we need to come over to this side and you have this big black piece of equipment right here. It comes out with two 10 millimeter nuts, one right here and one down in here. Austin's gonna go ahead and take that out. Notice that bolt is still down in the hole. But this is our chase. And also, below that is the rubber boot that we will cut from underside. Uh, there's a big twist tie around that. We'll cut that open. And this is where we will feed our uh, power to the pump through. And then we'll close that back up with a new twist tie. So let's get doing that. Take the uh, wire feeder. Go ahead and feed that to me on this side, Austin. That's the most open side. And it should just pop out right here. Okay, Austin got that through, so we're gonna now pull the power line over to that side and feed, feed that over. Keep going, gotta wiggle. All right, we got the power through there. Now we're gonna make an attempt to get the fuel line. But as you can see, it's a mighty bit bigger to squeeze through this little channel so we've got to be careful and not yank too hard on it just kind of wiggle it as you pull don't tug just like this Austin kind of you know stroke it <laughs> sorry okay we've got both the power and the fuel line pulled through you want to stay to the left side of this channel because there is a whole bunch of wiring going on down here you can see this big truncated line this actually goes under here and then goes straight up through there so if you can stay to this side of that big line you're going to have a lot more uh, room to play even though there's more space here you can't get past this truncated line also note this is your vehicle ground this is where we're going to place our ground and then we're going to feed our power through the front side of this truncated line we're going to pull this mat back a little bit and you can see barely because there's very little light this little piece will pop up so you can pull your power line through here and we'll go over the wiring a little bit later okay we've got our dry fit in here in all uh, uh, transparency we did pull it out <clears throat> and drill the holes just a tiny bit bigger uh, to make sure everything slips down in there real nice i think we used a 3 8 um, drill bit. In any case, uh, we've painted it, covered it all up. Now we're going to apply our weld. So we're going to use this stuff here. This stuff here is available on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. But we're going to go ahead and apply that down here, basically all the way around each and every hole, and that will take care of everything buttoned up. Okay, so we've got our high temperature weld on there. Go ahead and drop this bad boy on there. Okay, it's nice and seated. And then we'll go underneath to get this bolted up. You Come want on. your light? Come on down with me. Uh, here's my beautiful cart, just like his. Identical, if not better. So they supply you with washers and a uh, nut but I'm replacing those with my own because they're thicker and stronger, but I am using their nut supply. This is a 10 millimeter nut. It's a little cramped right here. Come on, my hands are too big. See right here, you can see the main frame that goes through that I was mentioning above. And this is that indentation I was saying to avoid. Just 
nice and snug. There we go. All nice and snug. You can tell that the rubber is right at the opening here and we've pushed some of the weld out. All this is fine. So now we're going to go over to the boot underneath the driver's side and I'll show you that. Here is the fuel line on the sprinter. We're just going to pull this cap off like so. We don't need that anymore. This is the boot coming underneath the vehicle from the driver's side. We're just going to clip that. We'll throw that away and put a new one on in a minute. But now we'll just have Austin go up there and feed me the the fuel pump line and a large twist tie. Oh, thank you. And that's good, Austin, right there. Can you get me a large twist tie, please? So what we'll do is we will drill a hole right here, and this is where we'll mount our fuel pump. And then we'll run all of our lines up and over down through here, just like we did on van one. So in any case, here's Austin, and I, will, and I will put the zip tie back on. Not a big deal, not too exciting. Hopefully it's big enough. All right, that's it. Next, we'll install the fuel pump. All right, I'm gonna get this out of the way, just so we don't hit it. And we're gonna drill our hole right about here. And this is a really thick piece of steel right here to get through, so it takes a little while. Enjoy the music. This is the incoming from the fuel line. And this of course will go out up and above. We gotta impact this in there. So we'll get the screw started. We'll pull it back out and then we'll uh, put the pump in. This would be a whole lot easier if you had a car lift. Just tight. You don't wanna wrench it down too much. So we adjust it to right there. That's a good 15 degrees. We will end up plunging this in up here and we'll zip tie this along here just for added protection. For right now we don't need that in the way. Now we can take our plugs out and our first one we want to attach is this big boy. Oops, wrong side. There we go. And I'm not going to tighten anything down yet. Fuel line. And we want to basically just want enough to get around to this in so so we just feed all this in there okay and then I'm gonna wind it through here just to give it some added support and then we'll get our other connector we'll feed it into this one try and watch these letters in here so you can see how much you're you're putting in that should be Good enough. There we go. So that's that. And we need the other one. And the rest of this, and we'll get up and over. We'll clip it. We'll put our wire looms on it and cut it to size. Feed it over the heat shield. Come down and leave yourself enough to plug in there so that should be more than enough to feed that through we'll trim off any un unnecessary at the other end okay got that nice on there probably should have put this in and on first Once again, watching your letters on the tube so you can see how much you have going in. That's enough. All right, everything's reachable. Everything looks good. Let's get our wire looms on there.
And remember, this is just for extra protection in case you're driving down a gravel road, keeps anything from banging up against your, your wire. And we gotta find out where it stopped inside here. I think we can just clip this excess off here. Here's our wire. Uh, excuse me, our fuel line. Add another connector on here. Make sure it's pointing in a way that I can get to the screws. Okay. And we got that. And it's gonna go top up. Just clip in like that. We can get the fuel line power line and connect it to this existing cable. Doesn't have to be too tight. All right, so that's out of the way. Fuel line's up and out of the way. Now we can tighten everything down. We will do another check of all these lines to make sure everything's good. Uh, once we get the system up and running, make sure fuel is flowing through it properly. If you crimp them down too tight, you can suffocate the fuel line. So we're just gonna get them taut so they don't fall apart. Okay. Obviously these are aluminum tubes, so you can pretty much tighten those. They won't crush. All right, that is almost it for underneath. All right, so we got our wire coming out of our boot from up above. There's still a little bit of play in there if we need, need any. We've got it securely fastened. We've got our hose securely fastened along with the wire on the other side. Everything comes in here, works real well. You're too close, you're way too close. And we've got our pump at about a 15 degree angle. Our hose is protected. Um, I like to stick mine up underneath here. I'm gonna find out what size bolt this is. I'm gonna put a large washer on it and I'm gonna bolt that in there to hold this from falling out. Probably won't show you that, but in any case, squish it in there. And we're gonna come over here. We're gonna stick this up there and in between the two pipes, I wanna make sure I got access to tighten this down. Okay, so once again, I'm gonna keep these where I can access them in between the two pipes coming down because once you get these bigger ones on, you'll never be able to reach this. So make sure you tighten down your, your one point and then make sure this is loose so we get on there easily. And we just stick it up in there. Get it all the way on there. And then tighten it down. Don't let it turn on you. I love working in tiny, tight places like this. Mm -hmm. Not. Okay. We got our wire protection, and now we're just going to use some twist ties and secure this one right here. And really, I think that's all we need. Keep that up and away from the exhaust. As you can see, there's other wires and things as well. I mean, you've got a junction box right here that's within two and a half, three inches away from the actual exhaust. So design wise, you should be, you know, this is heat shielded. You should be good. Everything within here should not be a problem. And now we'll move on to the exhaust and air intake. Okay, moving on to our final step underneath. We are going to start with the air vent. I have gone under there and pre-measured it. We cut about a foot maybe 14 inches off of it to uh, mount it up and over what is the jack location. There's a box underneath, so we're gonna come out the S-bar, we're gonna go up and over the box and down to the front to pull our air intake. And then our exhaust will connect to the S-bar, go down as far as we can bring it underneath. We will mount this up underneath the van. We'll attach the other side to here and then the small piece to here and we will screw on this little cap here. It's got these two indentations that helps you just screw it right on. And then of course, we'll plug the other end. Little bug guards, they call them, but they're, they're nothing. Anyway, we mount them up against the side rail underneath um, for this extra long line. I put a couple of them in there. Uh, that's typically all it will need. And if, if need be, we can put an additional one on this, but this is pretty short and it's not very bendable. So once you bend it to come out, the outside of the van. That's all you really need. Let's get to it. This is the uh, jack box that I mentioned earlier. So we're just gonna take this hose, lay it up, up and over the top, and we're gonna pull it down through here. And we'll twist this side up. And we gotta get this on here. There we go. And then we'll twist this sucker down, tighten it up, 
is our air intake. Okay, that's about tight as I can get it. I ain't going anywhere. And the air intake is up here. And there we go. Pull that down a little bit. And there you go. There's your air intake. Now, for the exhaust, this one's more of a pain in the butt. I need to assist. On your pipe and then somehow get that up there. Just not a whole lot of room to work, I'm telling you. There we go. So now this needs to come down. And a lot of people will just bring it down over this way. I like to bring it right here. So then I can put a clamp right here to hold it, and then the exhaust goes over here. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole right here real quick, as soon as I figure out where it needs to go. Right there. I'm going to put this so I don't see it. For that, so you got the side, got support here, mounted there. You could put another one here, but you really don't need to. That's it for the exhaust, the air. Let's go up top and uh, finish the job. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get this piece installed here so that we can finish off the interior hose and such. Um, they do not give you any appropriate screws for this, so I'm using these Home Depot bought self-tapping, uh, I think they're half inch or three quarter inch screws, and they seem to work real well. So we'll go ahead and get those installed. So now we've got our, our exit uh, installed. Uh, I've got some lights in here to help me with the cabling. This is our main cable and of course we fed the power through to the other side as well as the extra long ginormous fuel tank. So this can only go on one way. You have to pull this little gadget off of there and remember it'll only go in there one way so it, it will not go in this way. So just stick that on there. Once you got that on there Put this little wire piece back on there like that and it is locked in tight. So then I'm going to go ahead and wind up my extra cable. Try and get it out of the way. Just make things nice and tidy in here. Throw a little zip tie on it. And we have our main connection, which of course will only go on one way. It's rounded on one end, square on the other. And that clicks into place. I'm going to move that as far away from the unit as I can. Try and keep this stuff all nicely wound up here. I'm going to get me another zip tie. I put one of those little 3M sticky things on the side of the unit here, just so I can put all this back out of the way. And as I showed you earlier, we took the existing wires that were underneath and we wrapped them around and zip tied them off into the corners to get them away from the heat. You still have your, your chair piece out of the way. Everything's plugged in here. Let's go ahead and install our heater hose. And let's see here. Oh, and we also have this little vent cover that they give you so we can install that on here. So the best way to do this is to put it on your unit. And then we'll tighten that down with the ratchet gun here. And then I just twist it around, push it down here so it's holding all those wires against the, the sidewall. And don't forget to put your on. All right. 
nice and snug. And there you have it. It's holding all the wires again so they won't rattle. Everything's nice and secure. All the wires and everything are away from the unit itself because this does get very hot. And that's the end for here. Now next we're going to go over to the battery compartment. We're going to finish up the wiring over there to power the unit. Then we will hook up the control unit and run that wire. Okay, we're over on the power side and as I mentioned before, you've got your negative right down here at the bottom. And then of course you're going to have your uh, power over on this side. And we're going to be attaching right here to this particular bolt. Um, they give you this additional connection which requires more of that fancy pulling this out and doing wiring and sticking this doohickey in there. I hate that. I hate this thing. It's a pain in the butt. I do need the fuse. We need the 20 amp fuse here. But I'm not going to use this. And you can find these other wire deals. Notice the thickness of the wire. You can find the same thing at Home Depot with a built-in fuse. So what we do, we don't need the fuse just yet, just take our cutters, just cut it right in the middle here. This serves a couple of purposes. Number one, if this is down and underneath here, you're going to have to take off the seat or, you know, be really ambidextrous to get down underneath there to get to this fuse. So what I like to do is I like to wire the power so that it comes out just here underneath the seat. This will be right over the top of it and you won't even see it. So if you have a problem with your S-bar, you need to check the fuse, you just pull this up and your fuse, you'll have access to it right here. So now we need to get this all clipped out right. Let's see here where we at. By the way, greatest invention. These are awesome. So we're just gonna Twist this off here. So this will be an extension. We've got our blue 16 to 14s. And we just twist on like that. We we'll grab our blue section on our tool. Stick it right in the middle. Put that down one time real good. Should stay. Yep, nice and tight. Do the same thing to the other side. By the way, all this stuff is available at Home Depot and definitely worth it because you will use it wiring your van. Ton. Oh darn it. I gotta grab another one. I missed the wire. Put it all the way in. Nice and tight. Before we heat shrink that, we will go down here and you can see they give you a whole bunch of power cord. So these applications are made for many different types of vehicles. So I basically want enough to get to the ground and have enough to stick out the side. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this right here. Save this for later. And then I've got my handy dandy cut your finger off tool. I'll just splice it down like so. Go down the middle. Expose this a little bit more. And then we'll just cut this excess off here. Now the ground is just going to go right here in the bottom of our truck. Oh, I got way too much wire there. Just twist that on as best you can. That will go to our ground. And then we have our positive with fuse. Sit on there nice and tight. Nice and tight there. Okay, now we're gonna heat shrink these. It's good if you've got a gun, you can always use a lighter. Both work. Don't want to get that in yet. Alright, alright, so we've got our power in, we've got our fuse port, and we will end it stick that out eventually but now we need to run additional power cord just the power not the negative so we're going to kind of guesstimate here give ourselves some extra room to wire this all underneath here 
I think this should be enough. And then we need to get that red cable out of there. So I'll just pull this out of the sheath, get rid of that, and we're going to go ahead and clip these ends off again. Not too much, just about a quarter inch. Here's where I need the cameraman's help. Step on it. Okay, and now we're going to try and feed this cable through here. I just put a little bend on the end of it just to get it around that corner. Helps out a lot. All right, that's going to stay in that area. And now we're going to put this one to this. Try and keep your crimps along the same lines. There we go. All right, so now we're done with that. Get some of that slack out of there. And we can lay this under here like that. So there's our, there's our access to the fuse. Let's go ahead and get our ground mounted. It is a number 10 millimeter. Some of this other wire out of the way. It's not necessary. Back around. Just one little. Yeah, just so it's tight enough. Don't need to wrench on it. Everything's good there. We've got our ground there. Now we can take the black piece that we took out earlier. Let's make sure we keep our seat connector outside of there. So we have one bolt already sitting in there. Let's get all this wire out of the way so we don't ratchet it down on something important. All right, we've got our one bolt here. All right, just tight enough. Let me just get this one down here. Just one little crank to make it tight. All right, so all this is back together. We can actually close this off now. We've got our fuse. Sound might change a little bit, but so we've got our wire coming through here. Go ahead and push all this back down. So we need just enough to get to this bolt right here. So we can cut this excess off here. Throw that out the van. Just it up nice and tight. I think we've got a little too much. Crump a little bit off here. Catch that in the wire, throw it outside of the van. Crimp that back up, get it in there, and start screwing it in. Make sure it's all the way in there. Should be on there nice and tight. Good. Now we're just going to heat shrink that a little bit. All right, that's done. And now we've got this little doohickey to take off. And now there is a little piece that will fall from underneath, so stick your finger under there, hold it up. Don't lose that nut. There we go. And then we just wrap this around, drop it on there, and turn sideways like that. Give it one little crank tight, and there you go. There's your power. And just take this little box right here, stick it back where it belongs. Done. And that is how you wire it. This is our fuse for back here. And then this just goes back over there and gets bolted down. That's it. That's the install. All right, so that was our full install. Uh, so we've already wrapped up everything. We've got it all covered back up. We've gone ahead and installed the fuse over there. And um, we've got the controller that we hooked up in the front office with the cables and everything. We've plugged in our S-bar. It's the four prong to four prong plug. In the interest of time, we've already uh, cycled this up. You need to do it two to three times to get the fuel from the fuel pump into the unit. You will get an error message on here about the fuel pump. So go ahead and just disconnect it or pull the fuse, reconnect it, reset the system. Do that two or three times um, is about what it takes because it times out when it doesn't get fuel to the igniter and gives you the fuel error. So if you reset the system, 
it'll start all over again, start pumping fuel. And take, it took us, I think, two or three, I can't remember now, but that's a problem you're gonna run into. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but the pump is working if you listen carefully. You can hear it pumping. You will need to turn the unit on and off a couple of times. You'll need to disconnect it from the main wire, reconnect it, turn it back on again, because it will give you a fuel pump error. But now that you can see it is pumping fuel, this line is full of fuel, you just can't see it. But all the bubbles have worked its way out. You can see the bubbles coming here. Possibly, I'm not sure if you can see that. But it shows you that the fuel is moving through the line now. Let's check the unit upstairs. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, fire this thing up. You'll want to crank it up to, you know, it's probably 100 degrees in this garage already, but um, just crank it up to 95. It has a default of 30 minutes. Just hit go. It turns on. Immediately you will start to feel air coming through here as it cycles air. And it only takes about a minute and you'll hear clicking in here, which is the diesel fire going. And then of course you'll smell the exhaust that's coming out the bottom right out here. They don't give you enough to bring it back past the door, but honestly, you're not gonna have the door open if you're you know, trying to heat the cabin, uh, so you won't smell that. And you definitely wanna get it outside of the cabin and not have gases heating up underneath your vehicle. But that's about it. As I mentioned before, we're gonna run this under the floor and we're gonna pop it up over in the back corner where our um, upper boxes are gonna be and control it from there. It's in, works perfect. I don't know what else to say to you, but if you got any uh, benefit out of this, please hit the like button below, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. Oh, hey, and if you turn around and look right here, we've got the new Thetford toilet with the five gallon pullout. We're gonna be installing this in band two, uh, along with a different flooring insulation in this one. We're gonna be going with Havelock wool from now on. So stay tuned for that. Hit subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Be good to each other.